Hey everybody, and welcome back to another devlog of Sharks and Alpacas, my little Python game development project I've been working on for the past few months. And last episode, we've been working on converting our square tile grid into a hexagonal tile grid, and that caused all kinds of complications. But in the end, we got the basics working, and the next step is actually to transfer what we learned about the reflections within a hexagon and apply it to the actual game problem, which is to only reflect off certain solid hexagons. For this purpose, I modified our little test window here to have some random solid tiles that we can bounce off of. And to figure out which tile is in our way, we have to check every hexagon that lies along our vector. But how do we figure out the hexagon IDs of these tiles? One common approach for this is raycasting. Instead of having just a whole vector on the field, we chop it up into little pieces and move stepwise along our vector. And at every point, we figure out which hexagon ID it crosses. Just as a side note, raycasting and ray tracing are almost identical techniques. So all the same concepts apply to both. And this is what I implemented here. So while I have a long vector like this, it actually only moves through this vector one hexagon side length at a time. And you can see if it would reach the next hexagon, it finds the intersection point of that last hexagon. And then we can reflect of that only if it is a solid tile, like we can see here. This approach works all right, but it has some flaws. Namely, once again, the edges of the hexagon, like in this example, causes a problem if the point we checked is right before the edge and the next point is right after the edge. So if we cross the hexagon substantially, it will detect it. But if it's only at the edge, we will miss some hexagons. So for a while I thought that is the limit. The only way to make it more precise is to go in smaller and smaller increments along the vector, ideally down to a pixel level, but this is just not feasible at the frame rate that we can still play the game at. Then I came across this shader code. And this showed me that it is possible to precisely determine all the hexagons along the ray. Although not being familiar with shader code whatsoever, I could not figure out how to get this code to work for my setup. Only when I was discussing this problem with a friend, he was able to boil it down for me to some key concept that I could basically implement from scratch. Step one, figure out which edge of the current hexagon is being intersected by the vector. Step two, find the ID of the hexagon sharing this edge with the current hexagon and then go in a loop until we run the whole length of the vector. And the good thing is that I already implemented the code to find the intersection with a hexagon edge in the last devlog. So I could just use the same code, run it in a loop of all the hexagons to find all the traversed hexagons along my vector. This is the code implementing that, going along the vector and finding all the hexagon IDs. And there's at least one trick I learned from the shader code. And that is if I take the dot product of the normals of the hexagon edges with my vector, I can actually cut the number of edges I have to check in half. And that is because the dot product is always positive if the angle between the vector and the normal is smaller than 90 degrees and always negative if the angle is larger than 90 degrees. This way I only have to consider the edges that lie in the direction of the vector. And the loop over the hexagons keeps going while the distance from the start point is smaller than the absolute vector length. And if we find a hexagon that is solid, which means we want to reflect off off, we stop the loop and we calculate the reflected vector with the residual vector length and then show that in the output. I have to say though that this code is still far from being optimized. This is just the bare minimum to get it working for now. So this still needs a bit of cleanup. Nonetheless, this is what it looks like. As you can see, I calculate all the little intersection points for every single hexagon and it does work rather well. And of course, as soon as we hit the solid tile, this one in this case, we get the reflection. 
but this also works if the tile is much much further away, even all the way back here. So I'm really happy with how this turned out and I think this is almost what we can implement. Of course, reality is still a bit more complicated. For example, what happens if we hit another hexagon with the residual vector length after the reflection? After a little bit of tinkering, of course, this can also be solved simply by feeding the reflected vector back into the whole loop. And this is what we end up with. Let's see if we can get some multi-reflections going here, like this for example. It does work quite well and I can have pretty much however many reflections I want to have. And to be honest, this is kind of fun by itself, figuring out how to hit certain hexagons, like this for example. So maybe there's like a little mini game somewhere in this. <laughs> Two more days and another work trip passed and I have reworked the code, cleaned it up a bit, put everything in a function, took care of a lot of the edge cases and I think it is ready now to finally be implemented into the actual game code. But before we do that I want to give you guys just a quick overview over the cleaned up code in case you run into similar issues. So here's our ray casting function. We just put in our x, y position, a vector, a list of all the hexagon edges and a list of all the hexagon heights. We calculate the absolute length of our vector, define all the normals, all the hexagon side IDs and all the directions across the cube coordinate system. Then as described earlier, we calculate the dot product of the normals and the vector to make sure we only consider the three important sides of each hexagon. And then we enter our while loop. Within the while loop, we have our loop over the three sides of the hexagons where we determine all the intersections and then we save the closest intersection to the current position. We determine the IDs of the hexagon sharing the edge where we found the intersection on. In case we exceed our total vector length, we break out of the loop and give the output. And if not, we first check if the next hexagon is outside of our map and if the next hexagon is beyond the height threshold, which means we cannot enter it and reflect off of it. Then we calculate the reflected vector, use that vector to update the hexagon sides with the dot products and then we repeat the loop until, of course, we reach the total vector length. And that's it, that's all you need to implement ray casting or ray tracing, if you will, in a hexagonal tile grid. And it took me a long time to figure this out, but I'm happy that I did now and let's get it inside the game. And here we are, ray casting function in the game. It was relatively straightforward since we already did all the work externally. So it was a quick copy paste, adjust some variables, adjust the code around it a little bit and delete all the other movement code. And now if we start up the game, we see that we don't see much, but the alpaca and the sharks both now use the ray casting to properly reflect off and bounce off land tiles or water tiles respectively. Oh, this one was lucky, huh? All right, with that, I think I can conclude the conversion to the hexagonal grid and we can go back towards implementing gameplay features in the future. All right, I hope you guys found this helpful or at least interesting. And I hope to see you all again in the next devlog of sharks and alpacas. Bye bye.